like it's snowing, man. Like it's snowing, man. It's throwing money. They think that it's fucking funny. But I'm getting money. I'm getting money. I only live one way. This Monday, Sunday. See me on the highway. They calling me to fly down. Then they see me passing by. Then they call me to buy a day. See me when I drive up. They calling me to drive away. And I got a swing. When it's Texas, it's the driveway. Damn, I'm going to do my thing. And I'm going to smoke that gun. They calling me. What up, what up, my guys? Welcome to another show, late night show for the members, man. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. I appreciate y'all for supporting the channel as well, man. Quick little 10-minute show at halftime, going through the games for tomorrow. I will be live at 12 uh, noon Eastern tomorrow with our guy Chris B. Capping, but I will go through the game. Just quick thoughts uh, if you want to get on some of these games early, because obviously one of these lines are moving, which, I mean, I had already sent it out into the members uh, channel as well. I did already send out Mavs plus one and a half way before. You see what I'm saying? Uh, it's, it's, it's there. You dig what I'm saying? But regardless, uh, I'm not here to waste your time. I'm finna go through these games, four games for the Sunday slate, and I'm finna get out of here, my guys. Let's go over to the streets of Boston in this one. Celtics land 14 points at the house versus the Miami Heat. Uh, don't know if Rozier is going to play in this one yet. We know that Jimmy Butler is likely going to be out for this whole series. The Celtics are minus 1800 for this series, man. Absolutely crazy. They're all the way up to like minus 200 to win the East as well, man. So absolutely crazy. I didn't think they'd be this heavy of favorites. I thought they'd be like minus nine, but obviously we know that J no Jimmy in this one. Uh, Celtics, they probably come out here and make a statement. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't really feel comfortable with land the 14. I'm not, I'm not saying I wouldn't be surprised if they went out here and smoked the heat by 20, but the way that playoff basketball is, the way that the Heat are allowed to play that super sticky, uh, tight defense. I wouldn't be surprised if the Heat were able to be able to keep this close, but I do know that psychologically the Celtics want to come out here and send a message to the whole NBA like, we're the guys, we're the team this year. This is our year. Um, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm pretty sure they want to come out here and send a message, man. So they did remember they got kicked out of the Heat, they got kicked out of the playoffs last year by the Heat. They they went down, um, 03, and then they won three straight games, and then they lost the last game, got smoked 103 to 84 in Boston. They remember it. They won all three matchups this year versus the Heat as well. Covered, um, they only covered one of them. One of they smacked the Heat 143 to uh, 110. The other games were close. They won the first game 119, 111, but didn't cover the spread. And then they won in Miami as well, land eight points, only won 110 to 106. So the Heat have been able to play this uh, team close. Um, it obviously no Jimmy Butler out there, but I just, I know that the way they play off basketball y'all see this shit like they're letting these guys play they're not calling these touchy foul calls so um you just gotta worry you like you just hope that the celtics don't come in here with that soft mentality like they can't come in here bsing around i do think that they could fuck around win this series 4-1 4-2 but you can't be playing around with the heat you got to got to put your foot on their neck but i'm a little bit of surprised to see them laying 13 and a half 14 here i'm not gonna lie to you guys even with no jimmy even if terry rosier was out as well i'd still be a little little skeptical of land the 14 now this is a statement game uh and so it's just crazy because like if they were laying eight or nine i and i still feel like it'd be a little heavy but i'm like you know what the sales is gonna go out here and handle business the minus 14 just got me a little touchy i'm probably not gonna mess with it i'll keep it straight up with you if i had to bet it i would take the 14 with the heat i think they lose this game but they can keep this game within double digits you see what i'm saying so uh it's a tough game for me to bet i know for a fact i'm not betting this one possibly look towards some three-point pops guys like Derek wright um uh, Derek White, Porzingis on some three-point props, something like that. Uh, look at some props, Hami Hakez Jr. as well. Uh, maybe some Bam Adebayo. So there's going to be some great props in this series, but um, it's just it's a really tough game for me to bet for the side. I'm just focusing on sides. I'm not lying. If I had to bet it, man, um, I'd lean towards the Heat plus the 14. As bad like as much as I don't even want to say that, I would lean to their way just to be able to keep this game within like eight or nine points or ten points. You know what I'm saying? Fuck around, lose by eleven or something like that. Like that 14 is really heavy. But but we know when the Celtics get to hitting threes, things could get ugly real quick. And I know that they want to come out and send a message. So I'm not going to bet this game straight up. Let's go over to the streets of L.A. in this one. Clippers getting two and a half points here versus the Mavs. I am taking the Mavs on the money line in this game with confidence. Um, I think that they got a puncher. I think that they really do have a strong chance at winning this series. You have to steal game one. Like before Kawhi comes back, you got to get one of these games, man. I think that this is the best uh, situation as well. The Mavs have been playing really well. Uh, they obviously those last couple games where they sit their guys out but before that they had won five straight seven of the last eight covered five straight and covered seven of the last eight as well uh they had played really well on the road as well the Mavs coming to this game 
uh, before that game versus OKC, before that on the road, they had won uh, seven of their last nine. They had won um, six of their uh, last seven road games. No, seven of their last eight road games. You see what I'm saying? They covered them as well, man. They had they won and covered six of their last seven road games. So the Mavs have been playing really well. Whereas you look at the Clippers, they hadn't been playing that well at the house for whatever reason. We know they got Paul George. We know that they got uh, James Harden, Terrence Mann, Norman Powell. They got some guys over there, but I, they've never also they haven't seen this version of the Mavs. The, they've played four times so far this season. The last time that they played, most recent time they played was December 20. That was way before the Mavs made the upgrades to their roster. Getting Gafford, moving lively to the bench. Uh, got P.J. Washington over there. You see what I'm saying? This team is stacked right now, man, and they can match up with the Clippers. This is their best chance to steal back home court advantage and to come out here and stun these Clippers before Ty Lue gets to making some coach advantages. I do think Ty Lue is a little bit better coach. So if you got like members, you already know. I, already, I sent this out when I sent out all the series, like Cavs, all that shit. It was in that same post, Mavs, plus one and a half. But I'm still going to take them here. Uh, I'll take them. I'll go official with the money line. Well, it's not a. I'm not even gonna say it's not official, but it's like it's my bet. It's tough up to you if you want to make it. You see what I'm saying? Like I can't. I'm not. Uh, I'm done with telling people. Oh, this is an absolute lock. Ride with me. I will never do that. It's um. <clears throat> this is my play, and this is what I have my money on. If you choose to ride with it, less cash. It's that simple. If you like the Clippers, go with your good. It's your money, my guys. I just want to let people know that. But I'm on the Mavs on the money line. I can't talk you off the minus two and a half. Usually, when these teams winning, they're winning and covering by margin. But that's just what I'm doing. Uh, I'm just I'm I'm taking the money line. See what I'm saying? I had already took it at like minus 120 as well. And then unfortunately, Kawhi, it looks like he's unlikely. Then you see the money line start to tick up. But the, like we had this news was already the same. You see what I'm saying? Saying, so you shouldn't be surprised by that maps to win this game straight up for me my guys let's go over to the streets of milwaukee in this one man a lot of people are not gonna like this one everybody is on the pacers um in this game not me i like the bucks in this game and i like that they're the underdog as well they wanted this matchup now you got to go and show out now wh what do we have here we have a young team playing their first game first playoff game they're not used to this guys like tyrese halliburton uh they're not going to be used to this physicality i know that the bucks aren't the best team but I still feel like, and they lost. They uh, the Pacers are four and one versus them in the uh, regular season as well. This isn't a regular season. I do think that this is going to be a slow down, more defensive type of game. The Pacers can play some defense, but I do think that if the Bucks can bring that defense with guys like Malik Beasley, Patrick Beverly, Bobby Portis, um, if these guys bring that defense and and get up and get into the Pacers' face and make them uncomfortable, pick up Tyrese Halliburton from half court. I do think that this is going to be a little bit different game than what everybody's expecting. This is one game where I expect. Um, the injury, like the uh, Giannis being out, I think everybody's going to hop on the Pacers. I think the Bucks take everybody. The sports books will be very happy with a Bucks result in this one, man. Everybody's taking Pacers for the series. They're taking uh, Pacers game one. Guess what? I'm taking Bucks for game one, and I think they win this series as well. This was the matchup they wanted. When you want this matchup, you got to go out there and get that win. They tanked, they tanked five of their last seven games, six of their last eight games to get this matchup. When, remember when they was losing to the Wizards, the Grizzlies, the Raptors, they uh, the the last few games versus the OKC in Orlando, they tried to be in this position on purpose. They wanted to smoke. Remember, Dame Lillard, he remember Tyrese Halliburton doing that Dame tie. All right, remember, well, we in the playoffs now, and I feel like Dame is going to get the last laugh. I know that he's going through a divorce, going through some personal situations, but this is a huge game for the Bucs, and it's even bigger for them to win this game that way Giannis could come back like game three if you lose this one Giannis might have to be like damn I gotta come back game two if you win this one he can sit out game two and then come back in game three so I'm saying I think the Bucks get the job done here it's gonna be a very unpopular pick guys I'll tell you that right now but this is what I'm taking if you guys don't like it you don't have to take it I'm not saying that this is a guaranteed lock it's what I'm taking I'm taking Bucks plus a one and a half I like them to win this game outright and you look at the Pacers as well the Pacers have not really played well um on the road as well my guys they uh, they lost versus Cleveland, beat up the Raptors, lost versus the Brooklyn Nets as well, lost versus the uh, Bulls as well on the road. Um, so this is just a spot where I feel like the Pacers uh, might be a little shell-shocked here. They might be a little giddy. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no Josh. No Josh giddy. You see what I'm saying? But they might be, oh, Giannis out. Oh, this is going to be easy. Oh, it's going to be a nod. Not so serious. Not so simple. Remember, the Bucs are one of the best uh, home teams in the NBA. This team is 31-11 and 11 at the house, um, and I think that they've been waiting for this spot. This is a playoff type 
type uh, type of uh, roster, and I think they get it done here, plus one and a half. I'll take the Bucks here with confidence in this particular spot. Last game up, man. I'm going over here to the streets of OKC in this one. Um, I really want to take the Pelicans in this one, to be perfectly honest with you. You know what's crazy? The road team in this series has won the last seven matchups. I don't know what it is, but, like, I mean, the, the facts are the facts. The road team has won straight up in the last seven matchups. We know that the Thunder aren't necessarily a regular type of one seed. This is one of the youngest teams in the NBA. SGA did a great job getting them. I hope he wins MVP getting this team to number one but like i'm not like obviously zion's not going to be in this series but if zion was in here i'd be taking pelicans to win this series i'll tell you that straight up man um now obviously it's going to be hard without the uh without zion but the pelicans still have some matchup advantage in this one they still got herb jones they still got guys like herb jones trey murphy that are really like perimeter like uh defenders that can guard really one through five herb jones can guard chet holmgren if he wanted to you see what i'm saying valentunas versus chet holmgren that's a little bit of an advantage for the um pelicans there we just don't know how much Valentinus is going to play. I'm leaning toward – I say all that to say I don't have a play on this game. I'm leaning towards Pelicans plus eight and a half. I'll sleep on it, see if I have a dream about it or something, uh, see if I see a, a fly, Pelly fly in my dream or something. Uh, but I do think eight and a half is a little too much here, man. I know it's no Zion. The Pelicans have had a lot of success versus this team. The Thunder play really great at the house. Um, this is a young team. They're a deep team as well. They play defense. They got the offense. But just know this is a defense – this is going to be a defensive game, and I do think – think the Pelicans are slightly the better defensive team. Even though Thunder played really great defense, the Pelicans, like if they're playing, if they're able to play like that that um really sticky type of defense, and if you get CJ and uh, Brandon Ingram that show up and they're hitting their shots and making their threes, watch out for the Pelicans here, man. Um, I think eight and a half is too many here. So I heavily lean to the Pelicans plus eight and a half. Hadn't bet this game, keeping it straight up with you. Uh, two bets for me, my guys, for me. These are not not even official plays. These are plays that I put my money on, and it's up to you if you want to ride with me. It's totally up to you guys. I know that these are somewhat unpopular picks. Well, everybody's uh, – a lot of people like the Mavs, but I'm riding with them regardless. But I'm going against the whole world. I'm taking the Milwaukee Bucks plus the one and a half. I think I have confidence that they win this series. I have confidence they win this game one, give Giannis even more time off. And if they do happen to lose, then I'll hammer them in game two. It's really simple. But um, I do think the Bucks come out here in more playoff style type of basketball, more ready. Um, they're, they've been through this before. Bobby Portis, um, uh, Chris Middleton. You see what I'm saying? That Damian Lillard's been in playoff basketball, but he's hungry for a championship. Um, um, Brooke Lopez, even though I think he's old and slow, these guys are ready for this moment. They will not be shell shocked. Um, all they got to do is pick. Uh, Halliburton up full court, get into these guys and throw them off their offensive game. This isn't a regular season, and I do feel like the Pacers are the prime team for the regular season. This is the playoffs, though, where every position matters and the game slows down. So we'll see if they can have a really efficient uh, offense in the half court. I'll take the Bucks here, plus one and a half, and the Mavs on the money line with confidence trying to go 2-0 one time, well, one time for the one time, my guys. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Appreciate you guys for being members, for supporting the channel. Let's keep it going. It was a nice day today, but I don't give a damn about what happened today it's all about tomorrow trying to get this motherfucking cash and we will go 2-0 and one time for the one time live tomorrow at 12 p.m noon eastern with our guy crispy capping um hopefully he has, he has some different looks as well maybe some thoughts on some totals as well some props we're gonna be diving in on all four games tomorrow i'm just coming to give you my thoughts early on you see what i'm saying i appreciate y'all for tuning in we out my guys let's go let's catch let's go <laughs>